Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another opportunity we have to worship on this special day within the church calendar around the world, joining with many millions of believers in the Christian faith, worshipping today on Palm Sunday, this 28th day of March 2021. We give thanks to God this morning for this day and for what this day signifies in terms of leading into the Holy Week, the Passion Week. And of course, we know what that means for us in our Christian faith as we journey deeper and closer into Jerusalem towards the cross of Christ, where on Good Friday we will acknowledge that day for all that it means, and then, of course, celebrate and worship our God next Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection, where life has the victory over death. But today, on this Palm Sunday, we again find ourselves coming together in this digital space, and for those who have a historical interest, then know this, that it is exactly one year today since we first commenced online worship services here at Sunshine Salvos. It was Palm Sunday last year that we did our first online service. And so what an interesting and varied journey we have travelled over the past 12 months. But here we are, 12 months later, and our online services continue, and we again have the opportunity in this digital space to worship our God together. I want to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land upon which I'm gathered here this morning, I honour those elders from the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, pay my respects to them, elders of the past, those in the present, and honour the aspirations of future First Nations leaders here in our great South land of Australia. And also, again, proudly as a Salvation Army officer, state the Salvation Army Australian Territory's commitment to the journey of reconciliation in walking alongside our First Nations people and achieving justice for them. On this Palm Sunday, I have a special reading that I'm going to bring this morning, a call to worship that really does speak into the fact that Palm Sunday is a day that we can reflect on in many ways, but this particular reading today really is a prayer of confession. And I thought it was a, a good prayer, a good place for us to commence our worship this morning in this place and in this way, as I read this reading to you this morning. Loving God, you rode a donkey and came in peace humbled yourself and gave yourself for us. And we confess our lack of humility. And Jesus, as you entered Jerusalem, the crowd shouted, Hosanna, save us now. And on Good Friday, yet they shouted, crucify Lord, we confess that our praise is often empty. We sing Hosanna and then cry, crucify. And as the crowd laid their palms in front of you, Lord, you took the way of God. You took no glory for yourself. And yet, Lord, we confess this day that we want to be accepted and that too often we take the easy road. We do not stay true, Lord, to your will. 
And so forgive us, Lord, and help us to follow the way of obedience. And we pray this in the name of the one who came on this day in humility as a king riding on the donkey, King Jesus. Amen. It's also a significant day in the life of Sunshine Salvos. As a little later this morning, we will memorialise the memory of one of our dear friends, Margaret Kelly, who just over a month ago passed away and was promoted to glory. And that today, following our gathered worship, service. As a community of faith, we will gather together and we will memorialise Margaret in a significant way, in a permanent way, in an appropriate manner, which will help us as a community of faith to move forwards without her, but also honour her as always actually being with us. And so we look forward later today to doing that. And there will be video of that particular memorial ceremony that will take place after our gathered worship later this morning. That video I will post up on our Facebook page for all of you to be able to share in. We continue to pray for Margaret's family, for Michelle and Cheryl, all their family at this time, we pray that the Lord would continue to journey with them and comfort them and strengthen them as they continue forwards, learning to live without their mum and their granny. But we pray that the Lord would be transforming all of that pain and loss at this time into warm memories and fond remembrances Lord, we pray for Margaret's family and we will continue to do so as a, con as a community of faith in the days ahead. And we also pray for others within our Sunshine Salvos family who are also concerned about the health of family members. We think about the Tran family and we pray for them, especially for Tan's father. We also want to think about our friends Rick and Fung Bernal and pray also for Rick's dad who has some health concerns as well. We lift them up in prayer and others as well. We continue to raise before the throne of grace in the days ahead. I have just this uh, yesterday posted on Facebook the latest newsletter for the month of April, the coming month, and it's there. You can access it there, download it, certainly read it to catch up with all of the necessary announcements for things that are happening in the month of April at Sunshine Salvos. But a couple of those things that I would draw your attention to, obviously, as we enter into this Holy Week, this Passion Week, we want to confirm that on Good Friday we are having a service in gathered worship at our Sunshine Salvos Hall that will commence at 9.30 on Good Friday morning, the 2nd of April. And on Easter Sunday we will be worshipping at our normal time of 10am at our Sunshine Salvos Hall. Other announcements for April would include a toy sale, which is happening on the 9th and the 10th of April from 10 till 3 p.m. on both of those days. If you have any need to pick up some very cheap toys, but in good brand new condition, then please pop down to our, our hall and you will find a vast array of toys that could be yours for a very reasonable price. All the funds that we raise, of course, from our toy sales uh, go towards our community-based welfare programs. 
So definitely, if you're interested in a toy sale, the 9th and the 10th of April, Friday and Saturday, pop down, come and see us. You won't be disappointed. The following Saturday is an opportunity for those who would be interested to also help us with some fundraising. We've got another Bunnings barbecue scheduled for the 17th of April. If you're interested to lend a hand and join our barbecue team, then certainly let either myself or Captain Fung know, and we will make sure that you are included in our team on our roster for that particular Saturday on the 17th of April. And the following Saturday is an opportunity for Shine Ladies to gather again at Sunshine Salvos because you have a fantastic afternoon on Saturday the 24th of April, a fantastic afternoon of candle making with Alison, Major Alison Platt to look forward to. So if you're interested in that day, also see Captain Fung and book your spot to come along to some amazing candle making. And I know from years past when Major Allison has led these candle making sessions that what is produced at the end certainly is amazing. The candles and the smells and fragrances are just amazing. So ladies, don't miss out on that candle making afternoon, Saturday the 24th of April. Of course, the next day on that Sunday, being Anzac Day, there will be an appropriate Anzac Day remembrance in our Sunday morning service. So lots of things happening over the month of April. But as I said, I encourage you, have a look at our new monthly newsletter for April, which is there on our Facebook page to catch up with everything that you need to know about and be involved in at Sunshine Salvos for the coming month. That's all the announcements I have for now. Scripture reading I bring to you today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 to 16. John, chapter 12, verses 12 to 16. I read this morning from the NIV version. It's the Johannine account of, of course, what we understand and are quite familiar with as being the Palm Sunday procession. John's version of that I read to you this morning. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your King is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this, only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things for him. May God add wisdom to the reading of his word this morning. We have been looking at over recent weeks the fact that we find ourselves in the season of autumn and we've been looking at some themes of what autumn speaks into our faith, themes like balance, themes such as what we looked at last week in the nature of change. And again, we find ourselves on this autumn morning celebrating with leaves Palm Sunday. And what really Palm Sunday effectively is, is Jesus' own victorious march to dying. And that in its own way has some connection with autumn. And we're going to have a little think about that this morning. But in thinking about a march to dying, I was reminded 
from early history studies that I had done of the events that happened towards the end of the Second World War. You see, it was in the summer of 1944 that Russian forces began to consolidate and capture and begin to encroach upon the eastern borders of Poland and other German, Nazi Germany held territories in that summer of 1944. And as those Russian troops began to move westward, bringing and closing in upon the German forces, the response of the Nazi Germans was simple because they were operating quite a few concentration camps within Poland and in that the area that is now Poland. They began to round up all of the Jewish prisoners in those concentration camps and they intended to march them westward back into Germany. The reason for doing that was simple. They didn't want prisoners advising the Russians or other allied forces who might come and rescue them. They didn't want them telling those people what the Germans had done to them. And so they began to march hundreds upon hundreds, thousands of Jewish prisoners, mostly men, out of the concentration camps, out of camps like Auschwitz, Birkenau and other camps located within Poland and started marching them westward back towards Germany. And these marches really became known as death marches. And one can only imagine what those poor Jewish prisoners were feeling when they were marched in big groups through the forests of Poland as, we, as autumn began to encroach and as the air became colder and as they marched through those forests day after day, marching through falling leaves autumn leaves, marching until they could march no more, until they could take no more steps where they would then fall and know that just as those dead leaves were spread out on the forest floor so also soon they would join that blanket and carpet of death because that's exactly what happened. When Jewish prisoners could not go any further, they would be killed. And I've often thought about that awful event and what it must have been like to be frog marched through those forests of Poland and Bavaria, through cold autumn air, kicking around leaves on the ground. And I often wonder if those Jewish prisoners looked down upon those leaves and began to understand the gravity and perhaps even the connection that they themselves had in this march towards death. That in effect, they were within the cycle of nature and the cycle of life and death, very similar to those leaves in that forest, just waiting for their time to fall, upon which inevitably they would. I've often wondered if they connected with the leaves that they pushed themselves through, through those forests. Because when we consider that march, and certainly when we consider the events of Palm Sunday, then we do have to be realistic in understanding that when Jesus entered Jerusalem on that day, that Palm Sunday, in the midst of fanfare, in the midst of praise and cries of Hosanna, we still, within the realism of knowing what lies ahead, understand that that was Jesus' own march towards death. It's often called a triumphal entry into Jerusalem. In effect, 
it was really Jesus' own death march towards the inevitable end that he knew was coming. And so that is what we've read this morning, that inevitable march towards dying that Jesus undertook as he left Bethany and rode on that donkey through the cheers, eventually to what would become jeers, riding in majesty, in humility, in obedience towards his own death. And so there really is that sense of foreboding within the passage, because we do know what's next. In the moment of Palm Sunday, when it was happening, of course, no one really understood what was going to be happening next. They understood the excitement and lived in the moment. But Jesus knew what was going to happen. In fact, just a little later, as he had been constantly letting his followers know, he explained to them again exactly what was going to happen. If we go a little further forward in chapter 12 here in John, and if we go down to verse 31, 32, then we read this, Jesus' own words to his followers. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. And he said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Jesus did not naively enter Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, not knowing what lay ahead. He knew exactly what was going to come. He had lived his life and had challenged the authorities and challenged the norms and challenged the power bases of both the Roman Empire and the Jewish institutional religion to such a point that he knew that inevitably he would be eliminated. And coming into Jerusalem in the manner that he did, Jesus knew that that could only result in one thing, and that was the will of his Father, and obediently he entered into that will. And he prepared, he prepared his disciples for what was to lie ahead. You know, even on a tree, when autumn comes, the branches know that the seasons are changing. They sense the beginning of reduction in daylight. They sense the dropping of the temperature of the air and they begin to prepare. They begin to prepare for autumn and the winter coming ahead. And that is why they begin the process of starting to shed the leaves from their branches. And we're going to talk a little more about that on Good Friday. But the process of preparing is real. And Jesus had prepared his followers for what was going to come. Palm Sunday was a part of that journey, that final culminating aspect of the journey. And he was still constantly preparing his followers in very frank and specific ways about how he would, in effect, die. And it's remarkable in that sense when you think that with all of the emotion and all of the gravity of what was weighing down upon Jesus in what really was stress, that he still was giving of himself in preparing those he loved for what would happen. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, of course, 2,000 years following that event, we also know what happens. And we're going to proceed through that week just as just Jesus proceeded into Jerusalem. We too are going to follow and go with him to the upper room on Thursday, to the beatings, the arrest, the torture, the trial, and the crucifixion on Friday.
but then also we will journey with Jesus into the silence of that Saturday. And of course, to the glorious sunrise on that Sunday morning when death was vanquished and resurrection life in all of its glory and victory reigned on that day and for that day evermore through Jesus conquering of death. We journey just as Jesus did into the events of the coming week, but we know what will happen. We're prepared for them. And so I ask you this morning to think about this. It's been a tradition within the season of Lent as people approach it and proceed through it, that there is often the encouragement for believers to sacrifice something. I must say within the Salvation Army tradition, we don't really have a fervent encouragement and, uh, and push that tradition very strongly. But as you prepare for this Holy Week, this Passion Week to come, I would ask you if you might consider what you would be prepared to sacrifice in these seven days ahead of us. It might be something significant. It might be something that's comfortable. What I know is that that which you might feel compelled to sacrifice as a symbolic act of sacrificial love and self-denial, that thing which you choose to is a personal thing for you. I would encourage you to think about perhaps in this Passion Week as we approach the cross, as we eagerly approach the empty tomb, would you sacrifice something as you prepare for this week to come? Because we do prepare ourselves and our hearts and our minds, our spirits for approaching the cross, which in its own way is a tree which Jesus hung on for you and me. And we do prepare ourselves in this coming week for that leaf to fall floating to the ground for you and for me. May this coming Passion Week for you be a meaningful week as you prepare yourself and others around you for the significance, the beauty, the horror, the depth of pain and the glory of of resurrection life in all of this coming week in all of its fullness would you join me this week in preparing well for what God has in store for you let us pray we thank you Lord for this day which we honor and remember knowing how difficult it must have been for you Lord to take that journey into Jerusalem in the manner in which you did, knowing that the cries and adulation of the crowds would turn, knowing what lay ahead for you. And so, Lord, on this day, we praise you. We draw close to you. And just as we prayed in the beginning of this service, we also confess, Lord, that too often we find ourselves falling short of the humility, of the obedience that you expressed and showed on Palm Sunday. Lord, forgive us. Lord, we pray in the days ahead as we also journey towards the cross. We pray that you would prepare us that we would prepare ourselves and others around us, that we would be 
in a symbolic way, willing to sacrifice something within our normal lives that shows that we are committed and in tune with your sacrifice of what is coming. Lord, bless us in this holy week, this passion week, as we journey with you to the cross and beyond. Bless us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A benediction I leave with you this morning. May the love of God the Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this week, particularly this week. As you join with Jesus and the rest of the body of Christ in journeying towards the cross. May God bless you this week. We will have an online service on Good Friday. It will come up on Facebook and YouTube on our Sunshine Salvos page and the Sunshine, Sunshine Salvos channel. It will come up on Good Friday, I would say probably around 11 a.m. But we will have an online service on Good Friday and also on Easter Sunday. But certainly, as I indicated within the announcements, if you are able, you are most welcome to join us in gathered worship on those two very holy, significant days for us at Sunshine Salvos. May God bless you this week and we will see you again soon. Bye for now.